Much of Maisie's early childhood was spent on her grandparents' rice farm in Fukushima, Japan. Maisie's mother had sent her to live with her grandparents due to her father's struggles with alcoholism and his compulsive gambling. With little money, but unlimited bravery, Maisie's mother boarded her and her older brother onto the President Cleveland and sailed across the Pacific to the islands of Hawaii. Maisie credits her mother's courage and determination with setting her on a path to success. When she came to America, or Hawaii, she was only seven years old. She was illiterate. Uh, she could not digest hamburger. And so everything was very foreign and new, and she had to adapt. Fortunately, through reading and uh, public education, uh, she did well. After graduating from the University of Hawaii, with a magna cum laude. She felt she wanted to give back and appreciated what coming to America meant and she wanted to help others. So after working in the state legislature for several years, decided that she would like to become a lawyer to help people. And so she went to Georgetown Law School. After she graduated from law school, she decided that she could be just as good and just as fiery as the men. And so after working on several campaigns and working for several legislators, she decided to run for office herself in 1980. There were several people who tried to dissuade her from running, telling her that she would be successful in the legal profession, but she wanted her efforts to affect many people at once and not just a single client. She served 14 years and probably could have stayed there and been reelected still and would still be in the state legislature. But she decided that she wanted a bigger challenge and she's a firm believer in taking risk, uh, leaving your comfort zone. So she ran for lieutenant governor and was elected and four years later she was reelected. As Lieutenant Governor, Maisie rebuilt Hawaii's workers' compensation insurance laws as well. She made great strides to improve early childhood education and tourism in Hawaii. By 1994, Maisie Hirono had passed more than 120 laws. She never set out to be a role model, but she does realize that with her unique background and experiences, she offers a perspective on the issues which are facing the country, face the state of Hawaii. In 2006, voters in Hawaii's 2nd Congressional District elected Hirono to serve in the U.S. House of Representatives, where she served until her successful run for the U.S. Senate, not only as the first Asian-American woman senator, but as the first woman senator from Hawaii. What do you think her proudest accomplishments are? Well, I guess we'll put fifth or sixth being married to me. Just being the first Asian-American immigrant woman in the Senate. Uh, I think it goes without saying that uh, that is quite an achievement that she's very proud of. Senator Hirono has spent much of her time in the Senate fighting for the health of Americans, their fellow veterans, and the civil rights of all of us. She tackles global initiatives such as clean energy for the military, as well as the elevation of opportunity in local businesses and the education of our youth. It is the distinct pleasure of CHIPS to welcome Senator Maisie Hirono into the CHIPS Hall of Fame. I've known Senator Maisie Hirono for over a decade. As a board member, she was known to be a passionate advocate, and I think that the writing was certainly on the wall as to how far she could go. Certainly we all know that Senator Hirono is dedicated to promoting policies that support women, but I want you to know that she's also personally engaged in mentoring and encouraging young lawyers. I have heard many stories of her mentorship. I've listened to her at student events where she seeks out the shyest of the summer interns to encourage them and give them advice. I've watched her stay well after events have ended to make sure that she can make time for every single person who wants to talk to her. She is a tenacious and powerful force to be reckoned with, but she is also 
always a friend that you can count on. It's a great privilege to honor one of my close friends, someone who exemplifies what it means to be a public servant and to dedicate one's life to helping those in need. On intellectual property issues, Senator Hirono has been a relentless advocate for the solo inventor in small business. She's also spoken out about how women are underrepresented as inventors on patents. Fewer than 20% of patents have at least one woman named as an inventor. I applaud her efforts to make sure that everyone, regardless of gender, has the same chances, the same encouragement to be an innovator. It's my privilege to call you my friend, Maisie. Thank you for your service, your dedication, and your wisdom. On behalf of all your colleagues in the Senate, we send our most sincere congratulations and thanks for your service. I could not be happier to see my dear friend and Ohana, Senator Maisie Hirono, that she's been named this year's CHIPS Hall of Fame honoree. When people always say, oh, Maisie, she's so quiet and nice, I always say, you don't know her very well. <laughs> you certainly don't know her the way I do. I've seen her stand up to bullies, absolutely the worst kind of bullying, with her chin out and her chest out because she knew she was fighting for the right thing. And so never, never underestimate my good friend Maisie. She's as tough as uh, nails. She knows how to get the job done. And she is an absolute fighter for people who are disadvantaged in this country. So congratulations, Maisie, on the CHIPS Hall of Fame. Um, you are so deserving, and I hope that uh, um, more and more people will have an opportunity to see your work into the future. Hi, Maisie, it's Julie Mar Spinola. Congratulations on your induction into the coveted 2018 CHIPS Hall of Fame. There is no doubt in my mind that you belong in the company of our other prestigious inductees. That includes the wonderful Federal Circuit Judge Pauline Newman and the supreme and notorious Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I first met you sometime in late 2014, early 2015, when you welcomed me to your offices on the Hill. Since then, I observed and learned about you and your service in the U.S. Congress that everything you have fought for, be it health care, immigration, women's rights, your constituents, the environment, have all been esteemed, outstanding, distinguished, respected, and influential. I don't believe there's ever been a time when you didn't mention your mom or your upbringing and how it made you, you. I do believe a personal history like yours reveals a fundamental core value and high level of human integrity that guides you in your representation of others. It is without a doubt a rare quality that deserves wide recognition. So thank you for having and exercising your voice for others. Thank you for being a great mentor and role model to so many women, young and mature alike, including myself. Congratulations again for being inducted into the CHIPS Hall of Fame. Mahalo and aloha. She feels very proud to be a member of this dream team of wonderful women and is uh, you know, very appreciative of the honor being bestowed upon her.